I had a date two days ago. Yeah. Like the first day. How'd you go? Really well. Really connected. We got a drink at Simpla, then we walked to the water, walked along the water, uh -huh. got a taxi back. It was great. Taxi back to what? Her place. And then what? Fun things. What? <laughs> What's all these fun things that people know but didn't tell me about? What's the point of me living vicariously through my students if they just go, oh yeah, it's fun. fun things? <laughs> What's a fun thing? Tell me all about this thing that's fun. It kind of blows your mind, really. Yeah, I think like, about it. Like, I mean, for anyone, right? Like, most guys, that's that's a thing they heard about a story and there must have been, must, he must have been a DJ. Must have been. Yeah, no, that never happened. Or he must have been the coolest dude in the world. No? Well, I mean, maybe, you yeah. Pretty cool. Cool enough. Natural Lifestyles, four-day residential. It's an absolute pleasure to have you all here. You all know, know me, presumably. I've been running this company since the beginning, since 2006 or seven or something like that. Uh, I'll be you know, leading this workshop. Generally, what I'm gonna be working on is embodiment, is a very functional street level meditation. All right, so the types of awareness and meditation that means that you are able to be, actually be in the moment, be present, uh, because that's vitally important with women, right? If you're scattered, you're off in your head, you're thinking five steps ahead, your body is betraying you in some kind of way with physical tension or with shaking and nervousness or uh, you know many of the manifestations that come when you are physically nervous, then that's not gonna assist you. And also it just makes it not very fun. Also in your embodiment, your posture, the way that you express physically, things like types of breathing, ways of walking, expressions, projections of intent, right? Because I think you're probably all familiar with the idea of the five principles, which is kind of our, you know, overall map and framework for the seduction aspects of this course. And it's almost impossible to project very good intent if your brain's full of shit, right? If, it's, if there's all sorts of white noise and tension, it's pretty hard to zap a girl with like raw sexual intent. Uh, so you need to be able to at least create enough space that you can communicate messages uh, or sub-communicate messages without words because that's often the juice that really gets seduction going. What's up, handsome gentlemen? Excited to be here, back in Budapest teaching. You guys know me as well. I've been in a company for a very long time by now as well. You know, worked my way up, I guess. I know all the things that it takes to get from the introverted analytical dude who I was and am uh, to the playboy or whatever now like you know how to go for different stages how to re how to reframe a lot of things at the beginning how to go from this stage to this to the next to this and back and so on so i am in a good position to help you with all of that to get you from wherever you are to wherever you want to go next and i do this in the real world by doing a lot of approaching because i've done a lot of approaching myself and i love it and i want that you guys love it as well because I've, i'm still doing it after eight years which is crazy right so i keep going i keep improving my skills in the real world and also in the virtual world i'm becoming really good at manifesting things from the online world into the real world so i'm good at building an online persona uh, displaying a certain style displaying a certain archetype um, to the ladies that I'm meeting in the real life, continuing seduction online and getting them out on dates with a higher closing rate. Cool. Welcome, gentlemen. Great to see you guys. Um, so time together with you this week is going to be an exciting adventure. So what I'm going to be working with is helping you with your identity. What's your story? Where you're coming from? Who do you think you are? How do you think the world works? Uh, some technical stuff, building a stack, who you think you are and how you can project that into the world. So working on what's the content, the skills, the sort of repertoire that you need to build over time. Uh, obviously that's going to be coming from lots of different directions from all of us. So I'll just be trying to keep an eye on like what's happening for you in your mind, body, state and your identity and how that's moving forward. And the third magic part of the scenario is obviously going out, having experiences, getting feedback and in some sense being aware of the right kind of feedback, right? Because you can go out and have a lot of experiences but those experiences could be framed in a less than positive way, less than useful way. So a big part of my job and all of our jobs is to try to help you to positively reframe this whole experience and also to me in particular, I, what I really want to find is like what's going on behind uh, your eyes really, what's going on like that's holding on to these limiting assumptions. 
So we can talk about things like limiting beliefs or limiting behaviors, etc. But it's very hard to shift anything inside yourself if your subconscious mind's not on side, right? So we want to try and get alignment with your identity, your skills, your experience, so we can put that all together. I'll look forward to sharing this week with you, getting to know you, becoming good friends with you, and finding the things that really make a difference in your life so that you can leave with some sense of new identity and magic and purpose and meaning in your life that's powerful. Particularly the four day workshop, we don't have a lot of time and we've got a lot to pack in, right? So it's gonna be moving at a very fast and quite intense pace um, because you know we're trying to kind of cram in the full uh, methodology that we use theoretically and you know technically as well as practicing it basically at the same time but we want to make sure you guys are getting into decent interactions as much as possible to get you over that hump of not doing it right because who has not been really regularly approaching girls prior to this so if you were if that wasn't a problem you might not have, might not be here and i know a lot of the time that's the kind of the primary thing that guys feel like they need to get through is like that sense of fear or anxiety or like stasis that just you don't do it and you want us to make sure you do which we will right there will be no escaping it you will absolutely be doing that um, but more likely than not you'll probably find that once you get through that first you know seconds in the cold shower uh, that that actually becomes not that hard right the the getting yourself to do it or us booting you in the ass to make you do it until you can do it yourself uh, is actually way easier than you might think Right, and all of that's in your head. It's technically pretty easy to do that first bit. And then all the other stuff that comes after that, or in conjunction with that, is kind of where it gets juicy and interesting. The internal game, the, you know, the reframing, the understanding your own, let's say, social pathologies or things that have been holding you back in relation to the street, in relation to the women that you're meeting. And then us micing you up and being able to listen in and give you ex extremely precise and individualized feedback. That's where you're going to be making your big compounding gains and those are the things that you the, the advice and the techniques and the you know the feedback that you get from the coaches that's what you will then take with you out of this after the four days and then continue to polish in your own time now we will be here to do absolutely everything that we can to make sure that you have momentum and you have more than enough tools to work with you know for a long time and more than enough tools to work on to actually get real results right you're not going to get every single supermodel that you look at on the street i don't uh, but you will be able to get hot girls and girlfriends and lovers into your lives if you uh, apply this stuff for as long as it takes to really really install because four days is a you know this is a catalyst this is a, a compression chamber where we will speed up your learning possibly you know more than you would ever do otherwise and if not at least by years we're going to be cutting out many of the dead ends and the mistakes and the limiting beliefs and the things that have been holding you back or the things you've been doing and not really getting the results you wanted because you're repeating the same mistakes over and over again because when you know you can see guys that do thousands of approaches and don't get anywhere because they're just doing the approaches badly or they're just miscalibrated or there's some element that we look at and go ah that's obvious we can we can polish that up pretty quickly and then that saves you years of uh, awkwardness and loneliness and dying alone and all that stuff it's not fun good day gents right now i am offering free coaching calls with alex leon and rayan so if you'd like to take advantage of this get on a call with one of the lads have a chat about your current dating issues and create some pathways to making sure that 2024 is the year where you get this shit sorted click the link below book in there's only 10 free spots so get moving and now back to the video expect that you will have all sorts of different internal emotional experiences i don't want, i don't want to like tell you what they will be because it'll be your own particular journey but it's not unusual for guys to have you know mini meltdowns or to like get overwhelmed or or to burst into tears or manic laughter or all sorts of reactions to being well outside your comfort zone put in put in a pressurized container which is supported right we don't throw you out into panic we don't make you do you know, completely insane stuff unless you want us to. You know, sometimes guys want to be pushed really hard in certain areas. But we are very experienced and skilled at knowing or figuring out pretty quickly where your edges are, right? What you can handle and what you think, what, maybe what you think you can handle and a bit more, right? And then to be able to also put, put on the brakes as needed. Okay, you know, we are not drill sergeants. We don't want to fuck around. We don't, I don't want to waste my time or your money, right? We, we make sure, and we put a everything that we can into these workshops we don't sit on the sidelines and go yeah just go and talk to chick oh what did she say we're there with you every minute 
um, and pride ourselves on that. And so, yeah, you can expect that things will come up. It won't just be like, oh, I just need to, you know, get over that, you know, slight trepidation of talking, saying hi to a girl. Yeah, maybe that and some other stuff. You know, so other things can well definitely come up. And we are here for you, particularly me and Shay. And Shay, I would say, as a specialist, uh, have a lot of experience of dealing with men's trauma, men's anxieties, men breaking down in tears on the streets, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Try and shock us if you can, We're unlikely. It's gonna be really beneficial for you if you can be as raw, open, honest, and real with us as you can be. It's up to you to decide how much you wanna share, but don't grin and bear it, right? Don't just try and power through things all the time. There will be times and places where it is, don't be a pussy, do the thing, all right? But that's not the, the main message that we wanna put out, right? It's like you're going through some kind of internal and external battles, and sometimes they become parties, and sometimes they become really fun, and other times it feels like work, and other times it feels like you really don't wanna do it, and suddenly you're like, actually, I just changed my mind. I, this chick's thing is not for me. Uh, and then you might enter flow states where it feels really natural, or feels really easy right? all and all of those things and various other things may well happen so the best thing you guys can do is to communicate with us we're pretty good at reading people but communicate on the go how you're feeling and if you know how you need to be treated in those moments we will accommodate that as long as it's not I've decided I want to go home because I don't want to I'm not gonna let you go home so the attitude you want to have from tomorrow is I'm looking for a girl to go out with tonight because if you go with attitude, some, some of you will be on dates tomorrow. I can almost guarantee that. Really take advantage of this, of this space that we're in for these four days. Immerse yourself into this completely outside of any obligations that you absolutely must do. Um, the rest of it, drop your, drop your usual um, distraction stuff with pornography, with YouTube, with being isolated, if that's the things for you. You're here to be social for these four days. Um, and you're here to grow and you're here to push yourself and you're here to meet women, right? We, we give a big shit about this job. We, we could, you know, there's, there's all sorts of levels of, that we could do and get away with it, but we don't. Like we exhaust ourselves on these workshops typically because we are highly invested in your change. You know, this is our, this is our life's work and this is something that, that we don't teach a lot of people. We teach a small amount of people really well. So anytime a coach is giving you something very specifically to you, it's not cookie cutter. It's not like he's just rattling off the thing he says to every person. He's very precisely listening, watching you and giving you the feedback that you need. So please do take note. Uh, and even if it comes up out a little bit on the abrupt side, it's for your own good. All right, so actually this is the last thing we need to do for the night because we did it in reverse and we did all the other stuff before, uh, is to go around and introduce yourselves and say a little bit about what's going on for you. So the, the things I want you to hit is roughly why are you here? Like what, what, are, what are the things that have not been functioning or that you're wanting to, wanting to improve, right? That have led you to choose to come and join this very select group of brave individuals who, that you are, right? And please keep that in mind. You're, you're not like remedial humans. You are guys, most, most guys struggle with this and never ever get anywhere close to where they would like to be. It's a very tiny percentage of men who actually have the balls to face this. So, you know, congratulations on being brave enough of the millions of people, literally millions who watch us, to turn up here. Hello everybody, I'm Zeb. I am here because I really want to explore myself romantically, sexually, in a sphere that I've not had a lot of experience in. I've not had a lot of like role models or sense of this. I didn't date in college, I didn't date in high school. And so I'm figuring this out as I go now as an adult. And I wanted to join a group of, of people who were in the same position, looking to go through a, a transformative experience together and to learn some things that hopefully it can carry over to other aspects of my life. The crux of the problem I think for me in this case is that I, I do not approach women during the day. I'm kind of reliant on online dating and on meeting people maybe through social circle or through um, activities that I do. Uh, but those opportunities are few and far between and I don't feel like I have a lot of agency or choice in my life. So certainly one thing I'm looking forward to walking away with from this workshop is that ability to choose. I think that's something that you talk about a lot and that really speaks to me personally. In terms of like measurable goals, I think just building the habit of approaching women every day can continue that for the rest of my life, uh, or as long as I need to, I think, uh, is something that I would like to walk away with tangibly. Um, other goals, I think, are just um, 
being comfortable in my own head in that space and being able to sit in pressure-filled situations. And then concerns. I think that I'm a person who feels very enthusiastic about things before I do them. Um, but when you get in the moment, a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings can start to overwhelm you. So I think my major concern would be I don't quite take the risks that I want to and I don't quite commit in the full way that I would in a dispassionate, removed circumstance as when I'm in the moment. Um, so hopefully we can work through some of that. Fuck yeah. My name is Zeb. I'm from Hawaii originally and now I live in New York. I think since moving to New York about two years ago, one of my big goals for myself is just to become more social, um, to be able to explore connections in my life, be those friendships, romances, business opportunities. And I've been trying to do that on my own in New York and it's been challenging and exciting and fun, but I was looking for a little bit of coaching, a little bit of assistance with that. Um, I'm a big believer in getting help uh, from experts in things that I'm quite not expert on. Um, and though I feel like I've, I've had some success, I really think that this um, is not only an opportunity for me to learn some new skills, but also for me to develop as a person um, and learn from some people who I admire and I've been following on the internet for a little while. For me, it's really the honesty that comes through with all of it. Like, everything that I see, you guys just seem genuine um, and true, and also kind of aligned with my core beliefs and philosophies. Whether it comes to uh, meditation and awareness and being present, I think that that's not only a valuable skill for use and pickup, but also just being a human. Um, it's, it's kind of like a holistic self-development package, as opposed to a very targeted skill. Um, I felt like it would be an opportunity for me to grow and learn as a person, as a man, as much more than just this like one little area of my life. So that kind of resonance with just the energy. I think there is something to just feeling like you connect with people, even if you don't know them. The way they speak, the attitudes they have, uh, everything that comes through and just the subtle interactions and the way information is presented in the videos. I think that that's something I resonated with. It built a sense of trust and I was like, okay, I think that these guys know what they're doing. I am still very heavily reliant on online dating. That's a very big goal for me to overcome by doing something like this, is gaining confidence to be able to approach people both in the daytime in the street, and then also if I were to go out at night with a bunch of friends um, to a bar or even alone. Um, I certainly have tried going out on my own or with friends at night, um, and sometimes it's, it's more successful than others, but for the most part, uh, I don't. Uh, so am I feeling like nervous, intimidated? Yes, it's something that that's the point of it, right? Is to feel that emotion, to roll with it, and to get through it anyways. And that's why I'm here. You know, on the one hand, you can have a lot of expectations for something that like you've invested a lot of mental energy in. I feel like I've spent a lot of time with TNL just watching videos and things over the past uh, few months. Um, and also you invest a considerable amount of effort, time, and money to be here. So expectations can be high. I'm trying to moderate those because at the end of the day, this is four days. This is the start of a journey. This is certainly not a full arc. So what I'm looking for is some rapid skill improvement just by getting a lot of practice under my belt and also being able to like, try, trying to stay open to learning such that I can internalize some of the frameworks and principles that are going behind things and that way I can carry that forward and practice, continue to practice on my own. People who have really good mindsets in any realm Right? I mean, all of you have good mindsets in some areas of your life. You've succeeded enough to be still here and functioning and could afford this workshop, right? So there's areas where you have, let's say, even delusional mindsets that work positively, right? I can do this. I'm going to kick ass. Where's the proof of this? I'll just, I'll, I'll make it real and then it becomes real. And very commonly with men, we make up all sorts of stories about how scary this is, how awful it's going to be, and which then tends to mean that you don't take action. Right, because most people don't really want to run towards pain. Usually we try to protect ourselves from all sorts of types of pain. When you perceive, you make an interpretation that this is going to be hard, that I don't like day game, that you know, I'm full of dread or any of these things. And, I'm, and I'm, not, I don't want, I'm not coming down on anyone. I just want to draw your attention to the way that you're writing your own stories. Uh, we need to be really aware of that. So if we can't necessarily go from I think that I feel scared and anxious and not bad, not good. Trying to take a jump into, I'm the best at this and all the chicks love me, just intellectually tends to not work, right? Because then you're having a battle with yourself where you don't really believe the words you're saying to yourself, right? So there's a bridge between those two things, those two extremes, which is an acquiescence, a relaxed, just acceptance of things as they are without putting labels upon them. 
it's a very unusual thing to bowl up to a stranger and try and start some kind of conversation on, and try and put your penis inside her later. It's not a normal thing to do. For me, it's pretty normal now. Uh, and so my, my level of activation, I mean, I might get a little rise. Like, oh, oh, I felt something. Uh, and occasionally I do, you know, if, I, if I've been on the farm for months and I come out and I'm very rusty, then yeah, I'll, those, those sensations will be there. But I'd never perceive them as dread or fear, particularly fear or anxiety because I know they're not now. Like I empirically know that for me they are not. They are just like, oh, I know what's about to happen more or less, the predictability of just walking down the street to get a coffee to the activation. And now I interpret it usually as an excitement because it means, oh, cool, something interesting is about to happen. And it is. I know that something's more interesting than me just, you know, staring at the ground is about to happen. And I also know from my previous experience that something awesome could happen or something hilariously disastrous could happen. And, the, and that I will absolutely survive whatever it is and it won't be a big deal. Because I've proven it to myself enough, more than enough times to know the truth. Where does the pain really come in? A feeling that you've lost something. Okay, what? yes, a feeling yeah, that you've lost something. Chance. Hang on a sec, on that one. So, yeah, well, did we lose something? Because we never had it, yeah. right? What did we have is we had a moment in time. Yeah. And, and those, those are like, we can't lose that. Yeah. It's, it's there, it's, it's like music. Like you hear it, you experience it and it's gone. So, you know, the real time experience was like I had a little moment with somebody and then our moments separated. So we didn't lose anything, we had a moment. And what did we gain is another thing to look at. Okay, you went and approached a girl and then you fumbled and then you dropped the ball. What did you gain from that? That you can do what part, let's say? You can do a cold approach again. Sure, okay, so you've, you've gone and you've, you've experienced something that you didn't want, that you were scared of, and you survived, right? As with anyone, you know, any, like, pick one thing you've done in your life that was scary and you got past the fear of it. Someone. Public speaking in front of hundreds. Right, so prior, prior to that, that was probably something that you were like, I could never do that, or, and then you did it, and you're like, I couldn't, well, I did do it. Yeah, but I could never, oh, I did. Yeah. In the initial stages of this building this skill set, you need to get like a hundred ish approaches in to, to get a data spread that shows you more or less accurately where you're at. Right? You guys are all science brained ish, sort of, right? Mostly. Anyone who's not? <laughs> I've done a lot of empirical research, actually. Um, like, a, you know, it's, it's funny that guys are like, well, I went and did two approaches and then they didn't fuck me, so this doesn't work. Like, that's not very science brain, mate. Yeah? That's, that's, a, that's a woman talking there, right? I did something, I didn't like it, that means it's never going to work again. Like, huh? So, we need to get enough reps that we see, okay, where you're at currently, this is, this is the, the average results that you're going to receive. And then, of course, you know, your you data set, you repeat that, right? My first hundred is very different to my current hundred. Okay. So let's get a little physical. So I want you to move out so you've got enough room to put your arms out without touching anyone. So elements of good posture. Firstly, you've got to take up more room, especially you, because I saw you arrive. Don't stand like this, men. We stand with our feet shoulder width at least apart. Put your arms down for now, but that's good. Okay, lock your knees, so straight knee. Now slightly unlock them until you feel your quads engage a bit, all right? Because like elements of bad posture is basically, if I lock my knees, it'll create a chain effect where it'll tilt my ass out yep. and then my neck will need to counterbalance, which means that now I'll have some kind of posture like this. This is exaggerated, but you get the idea. Which means that there's tension in the base of my skull, down my neck, pressure in the spine and pressure in the knees. All the places we don't want pressure. That creates chronic fucktiness, I believe is the term. So instead, Unlock the knees a little bit, and then put your hand on the sacrum, another hand on the belly. And what you want to do is you want to tilt it just enough that the hand is flat and pointing directly to the ground and your abs engage a little bit. Okay, now let your head just, and, and upper spine just kind of drop like you're a puppet that's just been kind of lowered. So you're loose and your head's just dropped, like just floppy. Now bring your awareness to the base of your spine and move up your spine and as you do, imagine that you're elongating in between each vertebra. So slowly track and move up your spine and the head will be the last thing it lifts. Don't lift your shoulders, they're relaxed and loose. And then you lift your head and you imagine that there's a thread just lifting you up, like stretching you, not like 
putting any tension. It's just like you're being <whistles> lifted up a little. Okay, put your hands out to the sides and imagine someone's pulling you out, pulling your fingers by the bones, right? So the meat is just hanging off the bones and it's the bones that are elongating and stretching. And then lower your arms and leave the shoulders where they are. Just shake it out a little bit, okay? Roughly, this is good posture. What's this got to do with talking to girls? <laughs> well, uh, in order to be your sexiest self, you need to be embodied, relaxed, and sexy. And we can try that on by putting on the, the mask and the appearance of like a man that is standing confidently, or we can just learn how does our body mechanics work, how are we holding stress in different locations, how are we putting physical blocks in the way of being in flow. So, you know, at the start of these workshops, I like to get the guys embodied. That is to get out of there, just only in their brain thinking about stuff, into the full body experience of like, okay, I'm a moving, living, organic being that is trying to communicate with people. So if I come up all stilted and thinking too much, then immediately that comes across as stressed out or unconfident or weird or awkward. Uh, so it's really important that I help the guys to just get into their body, to learn how to relax, how to have upright but not rigid posture. Uh, and to really experience the moment, right? Which is often put forward as a cliche, be in, the, be in the now, well, how do you do that? This is some of the ways to do that, by being observant of your breathing, of being able to change your breath, of being able to scan through your body and to relax, of being able to uh, elongate, stretch, and to have better control over your movements. All of this stuff is a foundation so that when they then go out on the streets, they're feeling good, they're looking good, and the ladies love you. You've all heard this be in the now and be present, and all that shit, right? It's a cliche that means nothing if you think it. It's kind of worse than useless because you think you're being present when you're just thinking about being present. Yeah. Get out of your head into your body is how you get present. So, we did that in a structured uh, stretch routine. Like, we could have been doing that whilst watching a podcast and worrying, and we would have got the stretch, but we wouldn't have been getting into awareness. Right, so generally, most people find it much easier to meditate whilst moving than sitting on a cushion which is also good. Uh, but this type of moving meditation, I want you to take this with you as we go out on the streets, right? As you're walking through the streets doing the thing with the coaches, feel your feet on the ground. Feel the breeze, feel the touch of the sun. Look around and see the vibrancy of this pretty awesome city, right? And drink in the people, the hot girls, the interesting folks, the river, the Austro-Hungarian fucking castle over there that Orban's now chosen to keep as his per private house because that's what happens in soft dictatorships. Keep returning to yourself throughout this workshop so you can view it as an infield in a game workshop, as opposed to, I'm in my head, I'm in my head, and then I go and do an approach, and then I go back into my head. You're always gonna be somewhere in your head. You know, there's gonna be thoughts happening. We can't get rid of thoughts, but we can just redirect our limited focus away from them if they're not serving us. And in the realm of seduction, it's not problem solving, it's not analysis. We'll do analysis afterwards. You'll do, there will be elements of analysis that happen throughout it. Your coaches will be analyzing, you'll think about things as you're deconstructing things. But when you're in the, mo in the action, most of the time you wanna be in cre creativity and imp improvisation. Improvisation and, and analysis are not the same thing. They don't really work together at the same time. Right, there's all sorts of technologies, you know, different types of qigong and breathing and stuff, which I'll show you on the next session, where it's kind of like intensifies it. It's like a hyper chamber of it. But it's like, what's our, what's our choices? Like, I'm at home and I'm thinking about this and then I'm like, okay, I have to go and do the approach and I walk out in my bubble and then I go, you know, crack out of this chrysalis and go over and then I go, hi, I just saw you from over there and I thought you were cute. Oh, crack back in. Like, that sucks. And it's not, it's not practicing being social, really. It's some strange insect that goes, <laughs> Yeah, no, right, that's not the best way to seduce, although please do that for my entertainment. No, it's like I, I walk out the door, I lift my, myself up, elongate my spine, I direct my eye line at the world, not down here, you know, furtively looking around. It's like, I own this city, it's my playground, is the, is the attitude you should have. Not in an arrogant way, it's just like, this is my lounge room. Hey, glad, welcome, good to see you here. Hi, excuse me, uh, this is a little forward, I don't even know you, but um, could I have your phone number? No, 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 I totally understand. I'm a strange person, you don't know me, you don't know where I'm from. Um, 
But could I have, could I have your phone number? No, no, it's totally get it. Totally get it. This is this is like really weird. This is really weird. And yeah, I, I like don't want to creep you out or, or do anything weird, but uh can I have your number? Sorry. No? No? Sorry. You sure? You triple sure? I'm sure. Okay, I've asked you three times, so you're very sure. Have a nice day. Okay, that was interesting. Cause at first I was like, oh this is gonna be bad because like I waved at her, she didn't even acknowledge me. She barely looked at me as she walked past, and then I just turned and walked with her. Mm -hmm. And then she gave me a little bit of something. And I, I like said, I know this is weird, I know this is strange, this is forward, but can I have your number? And then she kind of laughed and said no. And then the diffusing, like kind of dodging the objection that you talked about really helped. Yeah, look, uh, as you start getting more reps in, you'll realize that like, there's a spread of like, girls who are generally open to chatting people, yep. girls who are like bluntly fuck off yep. energy. And then there's the, the understandable mid range, which is most of them, of right. like, you're a stranger. Yeah, I don't so know. So I don't know what's going on or I don't know yet, or probably not. And we're going to work mainly within that range. Exactly. Right? Yeah, so being able to show way. someone, like there's lots of other ways that we do that, right? If I'm like, hey, how are you? And she's like, mm. so don't worry, I'm not telling you anything. You just look awesome today. Exactly. And then she's like, okay, thank you. So, uh, you and she's about to go, so, do you mind if I walk with you? Yep. Like these are all diffusing techniques. Here. It felt like I could transition into something like mm -hmm. that, where I was just like, uh, I'm like, totally understand and then just moved into a normal conversation right. or something. Yes. Mind if I walk with you for a little bit. Sorry, don't want to disturb your day, but yes. you look great. Because, I mean, obviously what we're doing is we're jumping straight to the end of an interaction. Yes. And, you know, and it's, I've seen it work, but yeah. it's not a technique, right? No, it's no, not no. something no, that we're... No, it's meant to, yeah, get you to face that uncomfortability of like, you know the person's going to say no. Or it's also they... about pulling the trigger, right? So it's yeah. like, because often guys, you know, they don't have as much practice pulling the trigger as they do as the opener. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So being able to just like, because otherwise you end up in situations where you had a nice chat and then you let them go without asking for a contact. Tricky question. Uh, tricky question? Do you just not do anything for fun? Um, well, uh, so we just came here, came back here from a boat trip and it was pretty nice. It just 100 and one. 151? 1,050, uh, 500 coins. Yes, so it's very cheap. <laughs> On the river. Not yes. like a boat trip in like Greece. Yes, okay, yes. okay. Yes, it is a boat trip. <laughs> okay, yes. very nice. Well, maybe I'll do a boat trip later. Um, and But yeah. you live here, so you can do this all the time? Uh, I live in the um, suburb. In the suburb. Okay, yes. outside. So it's a big weekend in the city or are you yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Well, I'm around all weekend. Um, I, I think you're kind of pretty, so if you want to exchange contact, maybe we can go out on a date sometime. Okay. Okay, sure. Do you have, what do you use? WhatsApp, Instagram? What do you prefer? You seem a little nervous. I don't mean yes. to. I know this is a little <laughs> weird, a little right strange. Now. I promise I'm completely normal. Well, <laughs> as a normal as an American can be. We're forward people. We like to talk. We like so to be friendly. American. Yes, I'm American. Okay. Good for my voice. Yes. I hear the Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I grew up in Hawaii, which is, do you know where Hawaii is? Yes. Yeah, so it's part of America, but kind of not. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, let's, ex let's exchange contact. Um, oh, wait, my internet is off. What, are you, what else are you guys up to this big weekend? Um, not sure. <laughs> Just walking around with cool makeup and stunning people in the streets? <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. No, it's really neat. The colors are very, very vibrant. Almost like, um, like a butterfly or something. Beautiful. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you all as well. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. And then what did you chat about? Um, I just asked. They're all from here-ish, but they're having a weekend in the city. Yep. Um, and I just like asked them for recommendations, and I told her she looked cute and wanted to know if she wanted to go on a date sometime. Oh, you did ask her out? Yeah. Yeah, what I got her said? Instagram. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Nice one. Have you done that much in your life before? Nope. Um, only through much warmer approaches. Never like cold approach that. So that's your first like you just went and talked to a girl and then asked her. Actually, no, no, no. That happened once in New York as well. But it was like really indirect. It was kind of like, oh, you're in the city. Well, if you need recommendations uh -huh. for something, we should exchange numbers. It wasn't like. So the first time you told a girl, you found her attractive in some kind of way. Yes. And you asked her out. Yes, immediately. Isn't that a massive? It's fucking thing. amazing. Hey, excuse me. Hello. Sorry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just like your tattoos. Thank you. It's very delicate shading work. Thanks. Yeah. Are you from Budapest originally? Yes, or? I'm Hungarian. Oh, you're Hungarian. Okay. So did you get these done here in Budapest or somewhere else? Uh, my English is not so good. Your English is not so good? 
Um, well, you look very pretty. I just wanted to come and say hi and introduce myself. My Thank name you. is Zeb. What's your yes. name? Yes. <laughs> it's a pretty name. Is that Hungarian? Yes. Hungarian. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, thank you. So have yes. A nice okay. Have a nice day. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so firstly, talking very fast. Yeah. So you'll later on listen back and listen to the pace, right? So that's that, like, I better talk quick to... Because she wasn't instantly open, I think you do. You're, it, like, threw you a bit and so you sped yeah. up, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be at a chill pace, because she's talking at a slow pace. Sure. Right, so even if, you know, you're going to get many times where the reaction isn't instantly open right. and may never be right. in that interaction, uh, you still need to control the pace of things, mm -hmm. right? Because you jump straight from like, oh, it is, it's a tattoo, that is, yep. So you got a, you got a moment. So you walk along. She says, you said hi or something. I mean, you went straight into the tattoo. Yeah. Pause a moment. Well, you look really, really pretty. Cool. She replies. And what's your name? Okay. So you start to create a bit of space because mm -hmm. that's where seduction happens, not in the rush. Hi. Excuse me. You guys both look very elegant today. Just wanted to say hi and that you look great. Are you from Budapest originally? No. 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 Where are you visiting? Uh, Czechia. Czechia. From Prague or somewhere that I would not know? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, very nice. Um, but just here on the weekend or are you like interrailing? What's we the deal? We are leaving tomorrow. You're leaving tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, and how have you liked Budapest so far? Uh, yeah, we enjoyed it. Yes, yeah. yes. Anything in particular that you like to do? Uh, we were on Budapest. Mm -hmm. So you like to just chill. Was yeah. there anything else that was yeah. nice about it? Uh, we don't know everything. Like. <laughs> sure, but I'm just asking you about yeah. what you experienced. Yeah. Yeah? It was good. It was nice. Yeah. I can tell you're a little nervous. I don't mean to creep you out or anything. I just thought you both okay. looked very pretty and I wanted to introduce myself. Thank you. All right. Well, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. What, what are you thinking right now? They were not very interested throughout the entire thing. They were They're just from the Czech Republic. They're yeah, Eastern Europeans. Yes, I know, but they kept like looking straight ahead. She yeah. was like trying to avoid eye contact yeah. and giving me like very short answers. Yeah. Like when I asked her, "Oh, what did you like about it?" She was like, oh, "I don't know." No, you're you're I'm projecting. Wrong. Okay. Right. So they t what they said was, "We're here for the weekend. All we did we did just tourist stuff. Where we just walked around and went to a yeah. castle and we've been yeah. chilling." Yeah. Then you kept on trying to probe for something that wasn't there, and yeah. then you misinterpreted it as that they, I mean, whether or not they specifically wanted to talk to you or not, we don't know. But, uh, like, when she's like, oh, we went to the castle and just chilling. The thing there, and then you're like, no, but what else did you like to do? Or what else did you do? And that's when they're like, oh, I don't know. Because they didn't. They just came for a weekend, they walked around and were chilling out. Ish. Right? Unless they did something that they don't want to talk about. <laughs> um, so that would be the point where I would have then said, cool, what a, it's such a beautiful place to, to chill out. Mm -hmm. I just arrived and then start to contribute something about you. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Yeah. Because this is, um, look, there's a whole bunch of like five standard like issues that guys have when they first start. Mm -hmm. One of them is talking too fast. Yep. One of them is just asking lots of questions, questions and not and offering, not don't offering. interrupt me. Uh, because this is something that we've, the coaches have noted about you already, is that you're always trying to like ag acknowledge what we're telling you. We don't need acknowledgement. We know what we're saying is correct. <laughs> so to practice this, because I I intuit, and we noticed this already, it's common, that you release a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. right? With mm -hmm's, with yes, with like showing s signals that you're listening and that you're there with me, which I know is coming from a good place, but what it does is it diffuses pressure. And it also has the effect on somebody where you'll break their train of thought and you'll break the trance that they're in. Right, so especially if someone's explaining something to you, or tell, you've asked a question, shut up and hold, hold a like welcoming pressure, and then they will start to contribute. Right, so I suspect this is something like a habit of yours that you have throughout your life, right, and that's good because day one is all about diagnostics. Right, right, this is us to throw you out with very little, <laughs> very little uh, to work with, and then we can start to see how you flounder, and the way that you flounder is where we go. Okay, cool, seen that before, seen that. Yep, now we can start to iron things out. Cool, so, and this is, you know, these are all like standard common things that we see all the time. <laughs> Did it again. I know, I know. I wrote the book on it. <laughs> so, and you won't like, we, we'll, as with all students, we'll, we'll call out certain behaviors. 
you won't be able to shift them instantly because they've learned their repeated patterns and we'll call you out on them and over and over and again and then you'll start to notice yourself doing them and then doing them and then you'll start to notice yourself about to do them and then you'll stop doing them and then you'll stop doing them or you'll replace them with something else right? that's how we change habits so uh, yeah that's the point where like I don't I don't think you introduced yourself I can't I don't think so I don't think so either right so at that up point, until the very end so okay no. so at that point then you could have been like okay well I'm glad you guys had a chill weekend anyway my name yeah cool all right awesome and what's so you said you're leaving tomorrow what's the plan for the rest of the day okay so we start to have this exchange essentially of like question comments answers we'll, we'll work on this on role-playing class today as well sure. um, and there was oh yeah like you know, it's it's on it's on the border of reactive where you were kind of justifying yourself like towards like after you you didn't feel like it was sticking and you were feeling a bit I guess frazzled. You know that word, right? Yes. Frazzled. <laughs> it's a good word. It is. A, um, it sounds really, like what it is. It is, right? doesn't it? I'm, like always, I'm frazzled. Uh, I'm always frazzled. Um, and then you were like, oh, I'm just trying to you know introduce myself, and it sounded a bit like you were trying to justify yourself, right? We don't need to justify our presence to the girl. She does or doesn't want us there. We'll figure that out. So like kind of repeat like I know I've certainly said in videos you can call out things and you said I you seem a bit nervous and da 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 but I don't think they were really I think you felt nervous and they it just wasn't sticking yet I mean if it would it could have it may not have we don't know but that's where I need to just move through those pressure points as opposed to calling it out the only time I really call it out is when like I'm like hey there and the girl's just like you know giving me like really weird vibes then I'll say hey you don't need to worry, I'm not something, something. But I'm not saying, like, hey, I'm not just doing this thing because then it increases the negative pressure, let's say. Sure. Right? So, all, all normal kind of, you know, initial errors. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Cool. Cool. So, feel your feet on the ground. Relax your hands. Breathe in and feel your, from your feet all the way up to your head. And as you breathe out, imagine everything just melts down through the floor. Do that for three breaths. Open your chest. Let out a little sigh. One more time. Cool. Hey there, how's it going? Sorry, I just wanted to say your eye makeup looks really cool. I like the eyes. Have a nice day. Um, I continued on with the compliment. Yeah, but even before that, do you usually approach two cute chicks yeah. walking down the street? Yeah, I actually did it. Yes. Right, so these are the, like, you know, you spend your entire life with that them going past. Yes. And then you step out and you're like, hey. Wait a second. Yes. That it, like, it seems like, maybe it seems like a small step, but it's the difference between never having this work and it working. Yes. Like that, that initial thing of like, right. and like approaching two sets is, most men will never do that in their entire life. Yeah. So psychologically, like, yeah, it's, it's more intimidating barrier. for sure. Yeah, of course. To go together. For everyone. Yeah, yeah. understandably. It's two, there's two, eye, two sets of eyeballs. Uh, so good. You should be proud of that. Yes. You gave, a, you gave a sincere and accurate compliment. Yes. That she had some cool, as opposed to like, like it was, you know, it doesn't matter, but the initial girls, you told them they looked elegant. They're yeah. just dressed in summer stuff. Yeah. They look cute. Yeah. Okay, so that would be a more accurate one, or sure. you look, you know, summery. Sure. Right? Whereas this one, you're like, okay, goth makeup, cool, yep. that's accurate. Good. All right, two wins. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Hi, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm just visiting in town, but I noticed you and I liked your jewelry. I thought you looked really cool. Oh, Wanted to introduce you. myself. Uh, I'm Zeb. Nice to meet you. And you are? I'm Hi. <laughs> and what's your name, Grandma? Nice to meet you. Hungarian. Hungarian. Ah, wonderful. Okay, so then you will have to translate for okay. us. <laughs> or not. Um, <laughs> no, you mama. No, you mama. <laughs> Zia. That's about all the Hungarian I know. Uh, yes. Hello. I learned a few things. I'm just visiting Budapest for, well, I don't know how long I'm staying yet. That's cool. um, do you live here in the city? No, I, I mean, I'm just visiting my grandma. I live in England. You live in England. Yeah. I can hear the accent. <laughs> is it that, is it that much? It's a yeah, little obvious. British. You? I, well, interesting question. I lived in New York for the past two years, uh -huh. but I'm traveling. I'm on summer sabbatical for the next four months. And then I think I'm actually moving to London when all is finished and done. Oh, we've got to get the accent though. Ah, I can do the accent well, if you people like. people will judge you. Or I can do Scottish, it's a little bit more in the throat. Okay, do my accent. Go. Do your accent, okay. Well, it comes out as a little Australian if I'm not careful. Yeah, no? you ain't got it yet. You I ain't got, got it yet. yet. Ain't? That's, that's American Southern if you got the ain't. You ain't got it yet, man. <laughs> no. 
No. no. Well, maybe I need a little more practice. Maybe you can teach me. You can help me a little bit. Maybe, anyway. Yes. Um, I just wanted to stop you because I thought you were cute. I wondered if you're not too busy with your grandma this weekend. Maybe we could go out sometime. I'm going back to England. England? Oh, tomorrow, no. So tomorrow? I know. This is like my and you have plans thing. for tonight? Yeah, my grandma. Ah, I see. I understand. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you now I speak Hungarian? I don't. You called my bluff. You um, <laughs> but anyways, I understand if you're busy tonight or too. <laughs> See? Grandma gets it. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> right? You've got to go. You've got to go. Yeah. Well, would you like to stay connected on Instagram or something? And maybe sure, we'll end up in the same place. Instagram. Perfect. You never know, right? Yeah. Like, like I said, I moved to the UK. I'm in London. It's about an hour away from me. So. Where are you located? I'm living in the countryside, In the man. countryside? You wouldn't know where I live. <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't. I don't know much about the UK geography. Is it nice out there? It's raining right now, so, you know. <laughs> Take so, it how you wanna. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, do you wanna add yourself? Yeah, sure. No, no, hogy már csak te add meg, vagy mit. Beautiful. Csak így felhasználja az adatodat. Nem? Nem értek hozzá? Ne szújjak vele? Ne. Ja, értem most már, beírja az ő adatát. Not sure if your internet is acting up. Jó van, már kezdem, mert kezdem fölcsmerni a... You can use mine if you like. Or is it better? My date wrong. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Nope, still still loading here. Why don't you put in yours? Okay, I don't know mine off that hard. Yes. Who would have thought technology would be hard? Aren't they supposed to make it easy? That how does that stay on your nail? Glue. You don't like knock it off on things? No, as you're walking it's like around? Pretty strong glue. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Had them on for about a week now, so. Anything right. special occasion, or do you just like to put bumps on no, your nails? I like nails, but when I go back, I have to take them off for work, so... <sighs> Manual labor, or why...? I work in a pretty British shop, I can't lie. Pretty British, pretty British, Guess. actually. Guess. Uh, tea shop. No, I work in a fish and chip shop. Fish and chip shop. Right, there you go. That makes sense. Okay. Right. Nice to meet you. Oh, message me then. I will. Have a lovely day with your grandma. Enjoy your time in Budapest. Time here as well. Yeah, maybe see you again soon sometime. Yeah, maybe. Bye. Right, bye. All right, so firstly, we need to get Henny to translate all of what the grandmother was saying, but I think the grandma was saying, You should marry him and have children immediately, <laughs> so I have grandchildren. That is what I thought too. Yeah. Okay, so a bunch of things, and that's it. Firstly, fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, dudes don't approach people and their grandmas. No. Family combinations, when there's all females, it tends to work all right. Yep. Fathers and grandfathers, maybe not so much. <laughs> uh, but grannies always want their granddaughters to hook up. <laughs> yes. And she's like, you know, if I, if I was your age, I'd be there getting a piece too. So, uh, you didn't say goodbye to the grandma at the end. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. That was rude. You should have definitely said goodbye to the grandma. But anyway, you might get away with that. Um, good, definitely. And like ballsy and like... Did you feel under pressure with that combination or you felt all right in it? At first, yeah, because she was a little bit skeptical and then she was like, oh yeah, well, I'm only here for one day, yeah. but I settled into it and I felt more grounded as time went on. I felt that melting. Yeah. It was like slow. It wasn't like the exercise where we're like, and you feel it all go away at once. It was just slowly, I started to feel it less in my stomach and then less yeah. in my leg. Which, you know, with, with uh, exposure to this kind of thing, and yes, like the initial like pulse of like, oh, I'm in the thing and there's stuff going on, and then you then if you can actively start to relax during it, then cool. And, and it, yes, it settled into a vibe. Yeah. Okay, so critiques on that. What I'm noticing with you is I think you're trying to be clever. Yeah. Right? Look, there's a time and a place to hit him with something that's clever, but what was the thing where you tried to make a guess, where you said you called my bluff? What if I said I speak Hungarian? Right. And she's like, go on in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, yeah, there would be a world where you could say, you know that I actually understand Hungarian and your grandma's cool. Yeah, okay, so we might be able to play with that kind of thing, but you don't want to lean on trying to be witty and clever. Sure. All right, because it often comes across as try hard. Do you yep. have that phrase in America? Yes. Right. 
Fucking try hard. Did, did we make that? No, is it, is it Aussie? I don't we know. Definitely have we that we say it. it that, in, in Australia, it just means anyone who tried anything. <laughs> Fucking try, try and off. fucking better yourself, eh? You fucking can't. You should be you sinking piss yeah. and fucking being a shearer. So, you d- it simple is good, especially when we're starting, mm-hmm. right? The simple things are the good things. Mm-hmm. Just getting to know somebody, figuring some stuff out. When you've got, especially when you know you've got limited time, when when you've got a combination like that, you don't have time to sit down and have a good chat, right? Yep. So yep. You, that was about the right length yep. of time. So simplify things because then you get to work on the sub communication on the on your tonality on your timing on actually listening carefully to what she's saying as opposed to think oh, i better is there something clever i can say to that yes. yeah so that's something to work on also um when she said oh, i'm li-, like because you already said look i'm moving around but i might be going to london and then she said i'm leaving tomorrow and then you went oh no this instead that's the point we used Look, it worked fine in the end because you did actually get there. But she says, I'm actually leaving tomorrow. And they said, all right, well, in that case, let's exchange contacts because I might end up in the UK. That's a baller way to do that. It's just like, there's no problem. I'm a man of the world. You're leaving. I might see you when I'm in London next because I'm that kind of guy, right? That's the that's the vibe you want to have. As opposed to like, oh, no, because what does that say? It, mean, it Like, it subcommunicates. I was deeply invested in this and, oh, no, oh, no I've missed my chance. As opposed to, she's like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, well, in that case... If you have some time tonight, she says no. Okay, well in that case, let's exchange WhatsApps or Instagrams, because I, I travel a bit and I might end up in the UK. All right, it's just clean, calm, cool. Like, yeah, this is just what I do. Yeah, yeah. it's just the kind of thing I do. It's just the kind of guy. I am. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> um, and when she said, guess what the type of thing was, and you said tea shop, good. That's like a clever thing in that moment where. And then she said fish and chip shop, and then you start to go hmm, fish and chip. What can I do with that? And then she's like, I got to go, darling. Yeah. Uh, cool, and then off, and then off yeah. we went. She had, you know, she's learnt the British, um... Polite. No, no, no the opposite, the that. British sarcasm thing. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, you will need to be able to riff with girls like that, but... Yeah. yeah. but overall, you muddled your way through and did the thing. Yeah. And got, got the contact of the girl with the grandma that most, that no other guy is going to do that today, because they're like, oh no, that grandmas are so scary. <laughs> grandmas are great. And the grandma was like, Emma, please do translate later. We'll get that subtitle, like, yeah, they must say, get him, get some dick. She said something about internet. Yeah, yeah. One point. She was she like, you, you like, can, like, you can be on internet <laughs> with him. I learned this. <laughs> cool shit. All right, fuck yeah. Good to that. Good first micro session. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, part one of our series, diving deep into what goes on in a natural lifestyles workshop. And as you can see, lots of cool shit, like picking up a girl in front of a grandma and much, much more. So right now I'm offering some free consultation coaching calls for 10 lucky lads. So if you'd like to get on a call with Alex or Rayan, have a chat about your current dating issues and create strategies moving forward to make sure that 2024 is the year where you get this sorted, get your seductive goals and dreams happening, then click the link below, look in, there's only 10 free spots, so first in, best dressed, get moving, and stay tuned next week for the next episode in the documentary series, Uh, it's a spicy one, so we'll see you in the next video, peace.